Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earthwind Fire Water Training and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Leaders, we're going to jump into something today that I believe is going to, I think it's going to grab your interest. Today's topic is called the 13 Errors in Judgment. Now, the reason we titled it this way was is because these are things that we have seen over and over leaders have a problem with. Now, <laughs> okay. Robin That's a good and I, way to put it. <laughs> well, because, you know, leaders make mistakes too. Okay, leaders leaders aren't perfect. Correct. And I, I think that's the thing that we sometimes get wrapped up in is that, well, they're the leader. They oh, must be just, they our, must be right. I think our expectations occasionally um, are bigger than their, their um, abilities. abilities. Very good way to put and, it. And I, and I think that's and true. And I think we've both been on both sides of that. I think that's true, though. <laughs> I think that's true even even in our BOF, you know, our, our, boff, our, yes. our, our business our organization business. and family. Right. This this thing this this word leadership I believe sometimes gets misunderstood, and that's oh, yeah. that's why the expectation of what a leader is could be should be ought to be gets blown out of proportion from time. Yeah, to time. I always like you know, when someone comes up to me after a meeting and says, "As the leader, you should not have said this, or you should have said that, or blah blah blah." That's it's it's inappropriate out of line because there's usually a reason for it, and um, it publicly is not the way to, to deal with that and, anyway. And that, that would be a bad. leadership error yeah. in judgment. Yeah, on both um, sides. But let me let me start off here because I I want to I want to take this in a different route. I want it to be as positive as we can. Oh, okay. Just just because we're the leader and we make an error in judgment, I want to still keep this up on the positive piece. And that's because I believe in our mind, that's what Robin and I's job really is. So the first thing I really want to put here is that an error in judgment could be that you, the leader, really don't understand your role as a leader. Correct. And in some of the boffs, the business organizational family situations, um, you may understand your lead role as one thing, while other people understand it differently. Okay, now that's a set of expectations. Okay, that that's not an error in judgment. I think sometimes the error in judgment is is not understanding the other person's expectations. Of oh, me. oh, 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 yeah, that's and a so different. And so, because I haven't yes. taken the time as the leader, I, ha I, I haven't taken the time to to build a relationship. To build the bridge, to to build this understanding, so I understand what they expect, what they expect of me, as the leader. Right. And on the other side, I don't know them well enough to know what my expectations of them might be. Might be. Okay. And so when we don't understand that's our deep. role, that's that's I think it's really when we get in trouble. So that's like um, another mental picture would be who you are accountable to and who is accountable to you. Yes, so it's, a free it's, it's, flowing. it's it's more than just a title. You yeah. see, I think we get wrapped up in the title instead of looking at, hey, I, I need to understand you. And, and I'm going to ask you the question, what, what, what do you expect of me as a leader? And I'm going to say to you, well, well you know, what, what do I expect of you as a follower? Right. And I think that <laughs> really, because it's, it's an expectation yeah. thing. Yeah. And we okay. need to understand that. Yep. All right, so when you don't understand your role, your role. and where you fit in as a role, because I, I truly believe we're all so, leaders. Okay, okay, so, yeah. So where which which piece of the role do you fit into? And do you get that clarified before or after you say yes? I would hope. Before? I, I <laughs> would hope that before. those expectations would come along with the title or with the expectation. Yes, that the uh, um, interview. I, I'll give you a quite honest up, up front. I'm very disappointed right now in an organization that asked me to be on their board of directors <laughs> without any any expectations. It was just, just come on. We want you there because you're we good. You. And well, you did ask, didn't you? I did. I asked for a written a set it's of expectations. Three months. Because I know that without those, we're just flying blind. And there's no, there's no uh, line for evaluation. There's, there's no way to keep any evaluation. I, I have no so idea what, what's expected of me 
And I expect a lot of them. So mm -hmm. I wrote those down and gave them to them. Mm -hmm. um, because that's that's what's got to be. This thing of understand your role. Yeah. Where do I a, fit? It's a big piece. It's, it's like a, a puzzle. Where do I fit? It's a lot bigger than mm -hmm. what we... What we what we give people credit for, or acknowledge consciously and subconsciously, or we take time to put into place. Right. Okay. Okay. Another error in judgment could be, or and I've heard I've heard I've heard leaders say this. I don't need no job description. I know. I'm God. the boss. That's right. Um. Quite frankly, leaders, if, if you've ever heard yourself say that, I want you to go ahead and pinch yourself oh, on the way. arm and say, boy, Oops. was that an error in judgment. I, I need to make sure that I get a job description. That goes back to this expectations thing. Mm -hmm. You see, with, with, without a job description, without the expectations, we just make assumptions mm -hmm. of what each and every other person well, is supposed to or could do. Right, and it, with now a job description, you, I don't know where my job ends and yours begins. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do at any boff is stomp on toes. So, so they'll come back and kick you in the butt. When we assume things, right. we all know what that happens, right? So we need a job description. We it do. Needs to be pretty clear. I, I, I really started writing these and down. Delineated, you know. You know, a, a week or so ago, when when I was dealing with another situation, and the more I dealt with, the more I dealt with. One after another. It was three situations in a week. And all three things <laughs> were, telling you something. were dealing with, with the top leadership. And so as I started, just not, these were all just jotted down in my, my, my journal, just so you know. So the first two don't, un, you know, don't understand the role as a leader and, and they don't need, you know, I don't need no job description. Those were two high on the list. But the first one, this this next one goes right with the first two. I don't need any written job expectations. Huh, I'm the boss. What? I, I do whatever I want to do. It's my way or the highway. Uh, if you don't like it, I'll find someplace else for you. And without writing the expectations, <laughs> um, we're never quite sure what they are. Do we hear it the correct way? Are they changing? Now, that's um, an important piece. Yeah. You when they're not written. written, when they're not written, it's... Uh, how many times have you have you ever raised a dog, puppy, and you've told them one thing, but they heard something else and did something else? Or your spouse, whatever. Well, I was trying to be nice, not say <laughs> spouse, because because I didn't want to get no, in no, trouble. It's a boss. It's not a dog. It's a business organization or family. So without written expectations, we don't really know what the role is or the job description. You just kind of you're just kind of going down. through the motions. Mm -hmm. Um. And when we do that, and, there's misunderstandings that are going to happen. Oh, yeah, that have ripple effects. And they're going to happen every single time. So what we need to do is get a, get a role, our role, okay, then we need to have the job description, and then we need to have what the expectations are. Yep. And everyone needs to be clear, and they need to be and, written down and available. And shared with everyone. Right, they're not a secret. You see, uh, okay. that, that was one of the reasons I put these on here, the, the, the person that I was dealing with, said, oh, I have all those things. I said, well, do other people know what, what to expect or what, Ooh, you know? Buried in a and notebook. they they said, absolutely not. Ooh. <laughs> I said, I said, so there's no accountability. I said you, mean, you mean you don't share this with anybody? And they don't know where to find it. He said, absolutely not. I am the boss. And, and yeah, I, I would I, not be part of that. And I, I thought to myself, you don't even hear you. He, do I you, don't think he do really heard himself. I heard you say. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he really heard himself because he just kept going on at that same thing is that that was that was negotiated between me and the people who hired me that was negotiated blah 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 uh, and he really felt that that in his, what his words were the the little people didn't need to know that oh yeah oh oh that tells me a lot i would not be part of that boss yeah yeah I, i'd he, have to just walk he away. called me a little person and i i, I stand six foot two i'm not real little i'm you know yeah. pretty beefy I have a, yeah. um, I'm not real little anymore. That implies other things too. I'm not are, real little anymore. That you don't want to be part of that. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, thirteen errors in judgment. As a leader, I didn't understand my role. As a leader, I didn't under, didn't didn't have a job description. As a leader, I, I had no firm written expectations. Now, this next one really is important. You see, as a leader, 
I, I didn't need knowledge of where I would fit in the organization. Because I believe everyone is a leader. And I believe everyone has a part to play, a piece to add in an organization, in a bar. If you, if you don't know where that's at, you cannot make good leadership decisions. And you can't keep your mouth closed when you should. Okay. <laughs> so if you don't know where you fit in, you're always going to be either overstepping or understepping. Right. Or not living up to an expectation someone had, a misunderstanding of a word used, these things are always going to cause that thing called drama. Drama, right? And yes. and I'm going to tell you what in 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 boffs, drama hurts more than it helps. Right, it doesn't really belong. It, it takes time away from actual moving ahead. It mm -hmm. takes time away from building relationships. It takes time away from understandings. It, it takes time away from everything. It just detracts from, from all things. And it, and it wears you out. It, 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 well, it wears everybody out. Yeah. Everybody gets Whether tired the drama of the drama. Or not, it, it does wear you out. Yeah. It's, it's draining. Okay, number five. Number five. This is a big one. This is a big one, leaders. And you need to understand where you're at in this one. Is that you forget to walk the talk. That you go out in front of the people and you and you talk about all the good things that are happening in the company and you you believe in this and you believe in that and you do something else. But then they see you at the corner grocery store with your wife and two kids and you're totally acting differently. Right. You're using different words. They see you out at the local pub. Right. They see you out playing golf. I, I, one of my good friends who or screaming at the ball field. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, yeah. One of my good friends there. was was uh, was a uh, recruiter, and he told me that if if a, if a client that he wanted to recruit played golf, he would take them golfing because he would listen to the words they used mm -hmm. and how they addressed the ball. He said, now if I took them to a baseball game, I would listen to that, or a football game. He said, sometimes I'd find out what they like to do. He says, one time we went on a, on a boat with a fishing guide because that's what the guy we like to do. And he said, by the time the four hours were done, I knew I wasn't going to hire this guy and wouldn't want to be around him. But he was totally different when he was in the office. Oh, man. So walk the talk becomes a huge piece. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, I think you need to be yourself. I don't think you can... Yeah, I don't well, think, your honest self. I don't think you can fake it till you make it. No. Uh, quite honestly, there, there, there's too, a, that's much work. There's an organization that that is is uh, is a networking organization, and, and their, their their chief advisor always tells everybody, "Just fake it till you make it." Well, I'm gonna tell you what, you fake that's it, and people false. people are gonna know about it because they're gonna read you pretty quick. And an error in judgment, that's an error in judgment. Okay, I'll get off that soapbox. <laughs> Number six. Number six, Robin. Oh, I'm six. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, the 13 <laughs> errors in judgment. Number six is uh, an error is you do not delegate things that can be done and should be done by someone else. Right. Leaders must delegate. You cannot do everything. You shouldn't be expected to do anything. You need to understand the more people involved, the more people involved. Um, but what's the unwritten message you're sending when you don't delegate? That no one is qualified or as good as you are. Right. Um, and I've been in organizations uh, or, you know, small teams within an organization where the person in charge put me at one point in charge of something and then told me exactly how to do it, when to do it, how to do it, and gave me all the paperwork. <laughs> um, that, that is an honest truth. Uh, I thought, man, I've known her for years. She must not know me very well. She doesn't think I can put this little whatever the activity was together. And this is not the way I want to do it because it's been failing. Um, okay. So again, you got to delegate, and you have to give people. My my saying is, you delegate and make people do the job. You don't step well, on them. You hold and do them it. accountable. Right, you hold them accountable. But don't you, make them. You hold them accountable. Well, they it's understand. Just... Make them better than accountability. <laughs> those, are, those are big words. So it's like I'm going to give you a job. They don't expect you to do it. I'm not right. going to step on your toes. I'm going to tell you how to do it. If you have questions, please ask. If you need and, help, ask. But you're in charge. Take charge. That's how we build leaders. Don't and, grow and, the, them. and I'm really serious. If, if you don't give them the chance, if you don't delegate, if you don't give them the chance, they're always going to be sitting back there wondering why. Right, and, and they don't feel part of and it. And they're going to ask some questions, and they're not going to stay around. No, they're going to be gone. They're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're not going to, you know, why, so why, all their why, why would you want to stay if you were never being a part of something? Right. So delegate, okay? That's right. All right. This next one, number seven of 13 errors in judgment. Really goes is you don't have a clue of what motivates you 
and what motivates those around you. That's pretty basic. <laughs> this, this, this is huge. Leaders, if, if you don't understand what motivates you, that's one problem or opportunity. But if you don't understand what motivates the people around you, I, I, I've I worked for people who thought money motivated. Money didn't motivate. It motivates some people. So for for me, you could motivate me with a cup of coffee in a few, a few minutes where um, I could discuss something that was going on at the company. Sometimes it, the motivation is just like, thank you so much for doing a good job of whatever. You see, and, and that's an easy piece, isn't it? Yes, it is. But you also have to understand that different personality types have different motivations. That's why you have to know your people. You have to know your people. And sometimes the little tchotchke prize at the end of whatever the the job, the task they yep. accomplish is not a motivational thing for most people. We're learning that in one of my organizations right now. I, they don't care. I, I remember when we first got into Boy Scouting, uh, if, you, yeah. if you went anywhere Talk as a, as a leader, you got a, a, a ceramic mug. And we... We've got a cupboard full of them. And we were very intentional for two years about collecting those, <laughs> those mugs. Let me tell you. Uh, right. You go to an event and you get a mug. No. But after a while, you're like, oh, crap, I have a cupboard full of mugs. And what do I do um, now? Now what do I do? Right. Um, and so again, know, positive reinforcement. Know what, know what motivates you first. Right. Okay. And then build the bridge, build the relationship mm -hmm. with the people around you that surround you so you know what motivates them. And make sure the basic motivation for most people is a public thank you. Amen. That's it. Thank I, you I so agree. much. I agree. Goes miles. You, Goes you, miles. you can send a note or put, put a note on Notes my... Notes are nice. I, I'm, I'm a happy boy. Uh, like I said, sometimes the, the little present at the end is nice, but it's not necessary normally. Depends on the person. Depends on it and is. that's where you need to know. Um, but 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 you need to you need to you need to motivate. I'm I'm laughing because I'm looking ahead at the next one here. Uh, uh, okay. I, I'm not I'm not not laughing at anything else. Oh, this is very different. But number eight, it says, as a leader, well, I I don't need written, well-defined goals. Uh, what I'm hearing here is a lot of things need to be written down <laughs> and tracked so we can keep track of them. I, I would, Everybody needs goals. If you don't write you, them, they're not a goal. You don't write them down as a dream. And, and and I would never poo on anybody's dream. But you know what? It's out there. If you write them down and you share them with people, mm -hmm. you never know who's going to help you with that dream. And then they can be accountable. You know, it, it also is it's accountable and it's also um, um, trackable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all those different parts and pieces. So defined goals are, are super duper important. As, for your person, for your place, I mean, it's it's just super. For duper. your boss, uh, yeah, for your boss, I, I just think it's so important. Uh, there's 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 goals back there on that whiteboard, just so you know. Yeah, but you can't read them. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. But we're still accountable to each other. We are okay. Number nine. Oh yeah, that's a hard one. Can we do that? Sure. Um, you can't be everyone's best friend. Why not? And the entire boff. You cannot be your children's best friend from the F part of that, the I family. You. you cannot be your child's best friend. You have to be the parent. You cannot be everyone's best friend all the time. You can be a good friend, mm -mm -mm. but no one can have that many best friends. There's a difference between a best friend and a good friend. A good friend. So you can't be everybody's best friend. No one has that capacity, believe me. But you can be a good friend. And sometimes a good friend is um, holding people accountable or hit. Talking about the tough subjects. Might even tell like you that. when you're messed up. Yeah, calmly. <laughs> um, even not, remember, you know, a best friend is not going to criticize publicly. They're going to do it in private. And, and that's a huge one. And they're one. not going to talk about it. That's a huge one. They're not going to um, gossip about it. Right. I, I love what, what uh, one of the major players in the, in the leadership group says, that uh, there is, will be no gossiping in his company. That's right. It's in many, many, many companies that's grounds for firement. Yeah, he, he gives everybody um, one chance, but after that, you you no are gossip. let go. There's no gossip. Yeah, so you can't be everyone's best friend, but you can be everyone's friend. Make sure when you're a leader, you don't gossip. I think there's. <laughs> it's I hard. Think, it's very I hard. think for me, that's that's the thing. You can't be everyone's best friend, mm -hmm. but you can be everyone's, you can be everyone's friend. You can be a good friend to everyone. Yeah, I, I think that's the way I like to put that in there. And they'll be a good friend to you, too. Yeah. So, number 10. 13 of the 13 errors in judgment. As a leader, I can be totally hands off. I, well, I don't have to do anything. I'm just the figurehead. Everybody else is going to do everything. Yeah. 
I'm not accountable to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> we've all we've all experienced leadership like that. The, I'm the leader, and we'll do the, what the, I want to do the way I want to do it. But you're not doing any of the work, so I, I, uh, you it know, didn't work. When when we share these things, we a lot of times we're working on on different wor worlds we're, right we're, now. We're 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 sometimes we're let me and, rephrase that. We're usually dealing with some of these things we're talking about in one of our pops. And and this was this last three week. This last week I had these three in the one day. Yeah. In this one week and. This person, another gentleman, I hate to hate to beat up guys. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, women would never um, do that. But he told me that he, he his job was to come in and sit at his desk, pretty much. I mean, was he the receptionist? No, he was. He, he was the owner. Oh, <laughs> he was the owner. The owner of he what? Says, he says I have everybody. I have I have people do all those other things. I said, well, what do you do besides drink coffee? And, you know. He, he said, well, it, by, by the way, he owned a coffee company, just so you know. Oh, okay. Um, he drinks coffee. That's his job. Uh, so uh, the totally hands-off meant that there was no accountability anywhere within the organization. And he was wondering why. He the reason he asked money. me to come in and talk to me, he, he, he was wondering why they were losing money. They were losing profits. They were losing, uh, losing. Uh, bids. They were losing um, people within the organization. They were just, he, it, every, everything was you know, going away out of his company. Okay, I'm going to go back here. That he had built. Uh, um, this is number 10 out of 13. So I'm assuming he didn't understand his role as leader. He did not have a job description. He didn't have firm written expectations for himself or anyone else. Um, he didn't really know where he and everyone fit into the organization. He didn't walk his talk, whatever that was, because we don't yep. know because nothing was written down. Um, he delegated everything, including things he should have been doing himself, which is mm -hmm. a, a problem. Um, he had no clue what motivates people around him because they obviously were not motivated. Uh, they didn't have written well-defined goals, so they didn't know they weren't reaching them. He was everybody's he was best, best friend. friend. Probably only when they were face-to-face, -face, so I'm just going to go down that little <laughs> he, he sideway. Was. Okay. Uh, he was hands-off and everything. Mm -hmm. so everybody else was trying to write anything else. Which brings you to number 11, which is where the problem was. Oh, oh my goodness. Nothing. This is where the problem was. All right. He provided nothing but negative feedback. And he okay. did it in a way that was always in front of a group of people. Even when I was in his office sitting there, a person came in, described a situation, and immediately he lit into this negative feedback. Then when we went out on the floor where they were roasting the beans, mm, which yummy. wonderful smell, by the way, um, the, he had nothing but a negative comment to each person on the floor. You're not fast enough. You're not good enough. You didn't sweep up. There was no positive reinforcement anywhere. Okay, so this is an older gentleman. He is. He's been, he's, been involved. I'm thinking in a few different businesses over time. He has. He and has. was he in charge of those, or did he work for someone? He was actually ran them. Okay, somehow. so I'm going to go out on a limb here as a mommy and say that's the environment he grew up in. For and me, that's bad. When, when we went back to his office and I, I said, can Nothing I, but negative. can I close the door? You know. <laughs> Um, Ooh, I, I said, I said, you're, you're really coming off as a bully and yeah, not a boss. True. And, and I said, I, I really feel bad by giving this, this negative feedback. I said, but, but I'm going to be your good friend. I, 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 I you, you've asked me to come in and help you out and build your company. I said, the first thing we have to do is, is, is we it's have to take and change that. And, and you have to walk the talk. You, you can't just go out, you know. Go out and help the guy that's that's roasting the beans. Show if him. if he's not doing it the way that you you think it needs to be done, give him some instruction. Don't just yell at him. You just yell at him. Let's burn some beans. You know that's that's I don't get it. You know. I, I, so I'm I'm hoping when I go back to do a follow up, oh, I, I see some person. changes. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, this leadership thing, this thirteen errors in judgment, these have become so common that that's why I wrote them down. Okay, so when he's providing nothing but negative feedback, he is not giving anybody any positive. No positive. And he's doing it publicly, which we already talked about. You do negatives very privately, quickly privately, yep. you know, the 30 minute, 30 we, second. We praise minute. in public. And and we do the, okay, and in that case, it sounds like all you really need to do is show someone physically how to do it, and you would have eliminated all the words and the negativity. I think if he would have just stepped over and said, 
look, in order to take and roast, it's this many minutes. It needs to be turned this. Set the timer. Because it's it's this big machine that, that spins around and roasts them. So, okay. um, and it didn't look all that complicated to me, but I, I don't understand because the fire has to be up to a certain height and all that it's stuff. It's like baking cakes. Um, I don't know. It was, you know, it was, the right it was, it was the more right time, than, the right everything. Than, I didn't understand it all. And so I was asking them. I bake cakes. I understand. You know, I was asking a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, and, and the young person that was running it was excited to tell me the answers. Oh, so they did okay. So I think we, with, 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 wow. Neg negative feedback, ladies and gentlemen, when it's all negative and it's all public, very, very bad on many, many levels because everyone hears it and they know, and you've already, you've, you've already blown you already your, spread, you, you've you blown your, your trust. You spread your leadership judgment. Yeah. You just killed it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number 12, never making time for your team. This is huge. Yes. And do we make deputy to regular time or is that necessary time or both? Yes. Okay. One of the best things I ever learned was, was from a gentleman when I was, he was grooming me to be the director of, of an organization, and, and he would tell me all the time, you need to take, make sure you make time for each of the instructors out there mm -hmm. and also make time for them as a group. Right. Um, and the once, group has to develop also. Once a year, he would, we would go away on a group. Oh, I remember thing. those. Those were great crafty weekends okay. for Robin. Oh, well, they were great, wonderful <laughs> things for us. And then in between, he always made time to, to take and be yeah. with you. And it was such a great learning tool that I, I kept it and put it in place when I became the director. But the error in judgment is when you get so wrapped up into your organization, into your BOF, that you don't make time for other people inside it. Right. What they see and what they understand is, is that they don't matter. In, as, as, as individuals, it's, it's, it's a right. silent It's a silent signal. But when they get it that they don't matter, that's how they respond. Yeah, they don't care then. I mean, you know, there's, you know, you know it's, it's, it's that whole thing is, well, why should I do a good job if they don't care? They don't care. Why should I show up on time if, if they don't care? Mm -hmm. You know, it's all these different parts and pieces that go back to this not having expectations well, in the job description and, and all these other pieces that go in here. And I can I can think back on life and know there are times when work for worked, I did work a few times, for people or been involved in organizations mm -hmm. where that came across that they really don't care about you. You might care about doing a good job, right? Showing up on time and doing your work, but they really don't care about you. It does come across. Right. Uh, whether you stop and think about it, evaluate it that way, or it just sort of percolates. All right. Number thirteen, errors in judgment. Oh yeah. This, this one's important. Rushing through the recruitment and hiring process. Can't rush that. This is one you need to really take and take some time with. Now I know there's a bunch of HR rules, so make sure that you're you're you're, you're sticking to the HR rules. But you can, with the rules, you can take and ask some questions of the individual. Now here's what I'm going to really encourage you to do: make sure you write down those questions. Make sure that you write down the answers. And at the end of the conversation, both of you sign and date that paper. Right. Correct. Because if you are actually hiring a person and there's an interview process, and there should be a process and it should be the same for everyone, that, that includes business, your whole boss. Um, you do with your prospective children-in-law or whatever. Um, <laughs> we didn't think about that you know, 20 years ago, but now that, that might not be a bad idea. Go, but go through that process so that everyone understands everyone else. Right. They understand everything that we talked about, the roles, expectations, the responsibilities, again, the entire BOF spectrum, um, and get, get everything on the line and be honest and make sure they know that um, they need to answer honestly at the beginning and not just give me the right answer for the question. It's more cost effective to take a longer time to recruitment and hiring than it is to take and go through the letting go and restarting over. Again, when Dick talked about uh, the hiring guy who took people, you know, people to a football game or right. a fish or whatever, that's a social situation and it tells a lot about people. I know we're in a boff situation right now where if the person we hired had been honest <laughs> at the, at the dinner, he wouldn't have taken the job. Yeah. Um, well, I see we're running down there like usual. On behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and Robin Tom Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Our hope is that you've received a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you build your leadership ability. And if you have any questions or comments on today's program, send me an email, dick at leadershipwrangler.com, dick at leadershipwrangler.com. 
So go to the website and put make your very own time with us, www.leadershipwrangler.com. Or if it's burning, burning desire and you got to have it right now, give us a phone call, 727-422-1833. And until next time, D.W. the Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. See how close we can get 30 out of it? That was a good one. Yeah. I write good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, now it's beer and wine time or wine. Okay, one time. beer, cheese, crackers, what do you want? Apples, celery. You're asking me to think while I'm typing. <laughs> um. later.